Hey snackers, do you want to learn the difference between always on and reservable sandboxes? Starting with episode 30, our hosts Matt and Kareem begin a short series covering our free Cisco DevNet sandboxes with interviews of the engineers behind them. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm uh, one of the managers of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Welcome to episode 30 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that we think you might like to know. And the cool thing we're talking to you about today is, wait for it, DevNet Sandbox. We all know about the DevNet Sandbox. We want to show you how easy it is to leverage it in your developer journey and just bubble up some of the cool sandboxes that we have that we, we think might be useful for you. So Matt, let's kick it off. What are we doing? What, what, is the sandbox, what is the DevNet Sandbox and how do we get started with it? Well, the first thing that we're going to want to do is navigate to developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. Um, that'll take us to our landing page, and then I don't know if you guys can see this giant button that says Get Started with Sandbox, but that's what we're going to want to click on. Um, that'll take us to our catalog, and so uh, what you might notice is a listing. Uh, right now, we have 78 different sandboxes listed across uh, various uh, Cisco technologies, and uh, what we'd be using these for are working through our learning lab environments. It's potentially... Um, useful for writing sample code, uh, for checking and testing APIs, those kinds of things across uh, our variety of platforms. And so um, it's organized by uh, different technologies. So if you're interested in uh, data center te uh, technologies like ACI, we can click into data center and it'll filter based on, on that. And we'll see all the purple ones show up with ACI simulator, data center, network manager. That's one of the new uh, sandboxes that we're working with there. If you want to touch into Cisco Intersight, which we've talked about in some previous episodes, that'll give you information onto those sandboxes. We have a couple of things for you. We have what we call our always on sandboxes, where you can go get access to a sandbox that's available for you. And it's a shared resource. So uh, a lot of uh, it could be uh, it could be something that you are you know working with and on with other uh, other members of our community, uh, as well as a reservable sandbox. And the reservable sandbox is your sandbox. You do whatever you want with it, and it's available to you to run your code against, to, to even try to break. Um, so one of the most useful things about a reservable sandbox is you don't actually have to use your production or your staging infrastructure to test out your automation code. You can simply reserve one of our free resources. It's a free resource to you as a developer and uh, essentially run your code again. So um, it's pretty cool and pretty powerful. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to show you guys how you do that relatively quickly. So when you click into a specific sandbox for a specific technology, you'll be given instructions on the left-hand rail here. We're given a topology of what is actually part of this sandbox environment. So for example, this one is running Cisco modeling labs to generate some virtual devices that we're going to be working against. It's also tying in DC Network Manager. And then they tend to always have what we call a dev box in them. So it's usually a, a lightweight version of CentOS, so a, a flavor of Linux that we can then write code against the infrastructure that's running in the sandbox environment. Fantastic, right? A lot of these do require some level of VPN access, especially the reserved ones. And so uh, just a little note there that if you need to connect to the sandboxes, we will send you email instructions on how to do that when you make the reservation. Um, so if I want to reserve, I will click on that reserve button and it will pop me up with a scheduler and then I can uh, choose to um, schedule those out. Now, most of our uh, sandboxes allow for reservations of up to seven days, interestingly enough. There are a few here and there that only allow um, for a, sh or a shorter period of time, depending on how many resources we have and how popular they are. Um, and so you kind of have to pick and choose uh, how long you actually want to use that sandbox. But um, so that's how you get started with them. But Kareem, I was interested uh, for you, um, you know, what sandboxes have you used in the past and, you know, what kind of piqued your interest historically within the, the sandbox environment? So a lot of the, you know, a lot of the new uh, technologies that 
that DevNet and Cisco is releasing kind of piques my interest, uh, especially this, the latest sandbox uh, with uh, Intersight uh, integration with IKS. Uh, I think that's really useful given um, you know, everything that's happening with the cloud and, you know, the hybrid story that we have at Cisco. Um, the other thing that I, you know, I, I, I find myself using all the time is the technologies that I'm cover um, that I'm covering. So, you know, in order to run and write any code that I release out there, I typically, you know, run it against the Cisco DNA center sandboxes. So I have access to the always on sandboxes as well as the reservable. And it's cool because I get API access with my credential and I could actually test out my code before I go out and release it to automation exchange or I write a blog about it. So these are kind of the, the two sandboxes that I, the two types of sandboxes that I should say that I typically focus on. What about, what about you, Matt? Um, sometimes I'll just uh, jump into them for some learning uh, that I need to, to do. I feel like I might need to come up to speed with a particular technology. Uh, recently, I've been personally poking around the SD-WAN, uh, Cisco SD-WAN uh, sandbox, so down here. Um, sometimes I'll play with the modeling labs, uh, Cisco modeling labs ones, because that kind of gives us such a broad range of, of activity to tie into. Um, I'm personally obviously tied a little bit closer to the Meraki sandbox. So if we head down here, we have um, the Meraki sandboxes. And in previous episodes, we've talked to um, some of our uh, fellow developer advocates around IoT sandboxes and Meraki sandboxes. I know you covered that in one of the episodes as well um, with the interactive APIs. Yeah, one of the more interesting ones I do have to say is this multi-domain sandbox, and not just because oh, you yes. and I worked on it together. <laughs> yeah, but it actually covers a number of different technologies, and you can see that the topology in here um, is is covering uh, so compute UCS. We're managing uh, uh, Nexus infrastructure with ACI. We tied an SD WAN. Um, so this one is if you want to just see how you can build out uh, end-to-end multi-domain solutions, this sandbox is is particularly useful. A lot of efforts got uh, were put into that sandbox as well from the sandbox folks. Uh, I think I think in general, there's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes that um, that us as a developer advocates as as well as developers don't actually see. Uh, but I, I can't highly, you know, I can't recommend how how much it is to how important it is to to get your hands on a sandbox. Um, and use it. We make it. It's free, so we make it, and we make it super simple for you to leverage. Uh, I'm excited about this series because I think it's going to expose a lot of the work that our sandbox team does, and a lot of the important sandboxes that we think are relevant to our community right now. So, uh, I think it's going to be a, a great, great couple of episodes, Matt. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, uh, you know, and snackers, stay tuned for future episodes uh, in this series where we talk about some very specific sandboxes with our sandbox engineers. Um, and let us know in the comments uh, what uh, what sandboxes you might like to see a deeper dive into. Uh, but that's unfortunately all the time we have for today, Kareem. Um, so and uh, and snackers. So uh, join us next time uh, where we will uh, deep dive into to some specific sandboxes. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, snackers.